from. I got a really good example for you guys. You mm -hmm. ready for this one? Mm. We have this story from August 19th, 2021. Oh. It is from CNN. From Chris Saliza. Ah, the great Chris Saliza. Oh, yes. <laughs> Republicans treat, keep, okay. Republicans keep trying to make Biden's mental capacity an issue. Oh, no. And then that he goes on to mention people calling him out, you know, saying that his, his mental capacity is an issue and it's a Republican game and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read this, right? You know why? Because I can just pull up first from a day later. Most voters deem Biden unfit to be president, poll shows. Okay, okay. Mm. Well, that's not saying mental capacity like Chris Eliza was challenging, but it does show that most voters think he's not capable of being president. Now we have this story. Less than half of Americans say Biden is mentally stable enough to serve as president. Oof. Chris, it's not Republicans trying to make it an issue. Yeah. It's people being polled saying his brain don't work. It's an issue. <laughs> it's an issue. It's, it's an issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, mm. I'm feeling pretty blackpilled on this. Yeah. Because earlier today, I'm looking at all this news and I see this story. Less than half of Americans say Biden is, men is, is, is mentally stable enough to serve as president. And I was like, yeah, I, we know that. And then I'm thinking to myself, so I, I did a segment on this where I was like, not as much about the fact that Biden can't function properly and everything's collapsing and the country's basically on fire. And I was just like, I know the border screwed up. I know the economy screwed up. I know our mm. foreign policy screwed up. I know the president has no idea what's going on. And I know his cabinet's in shambles and they're confused. Jen Psaki is muttering and stuttering and stammering and, stammering and circling back. And then I'm like, what am I even going to say about this? Yeah. And then I was like, actually, if that's where we're at as a country... We are yeah. seriously screwed. Well, I, I, uh, I, I'll yeah. bleep myself. We are bleeped. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> because we're at a point now where it is uninteresting to people to hear that the president of the United States is viewed as mentally unfit, mentally not, not mentally stable enough, mm. that, that we're seeing the catastrophe and the crisis across the country, and we've normalized to it yeah. to the point where it is not surprising to hear Americans don't see the president as stable, mentally stable. I, I have a slightly different theory, and I wonder, I was developing this idea while we were talking about the Hunter Biden story. So the laptop now is officially correct. Everyone agrees. Mm. The New York Post, of course, is shocked that this is the case. Mm. Um, but I think, I wonder if the Hunter Biden thing is a segue to being like, oh my gosh, Biden is incredibly corrupt. Not only do most people think he's unfit to be president, like mentally unstable, they also think he's super corrupt. Maybe we should just 25th Amendment him out of here. So maybe maybe Kamala Harris's team made this story Possible. get to Politico to say, let's just start, you know, doing the damage. I don't know. Right? Just spitballing. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great theory. You I mentioned thought. Jen Psaki today, and 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 just again, the spinning of lies. What we need is we need like your parents. Remember when you would get caught like either drunk or late or whatever as a kid and you tried to tell your mom a story and she was like, no, like tell me what the hell actually happened. Like she wasn't buying it. Jen Psaki today when Peter Ducey asked, so you are asking Europeans to show their COVID passport, but if you cross the border illegally, you don't have to show your COVID passport. <laughs> and she said, well, yes, unlike the Europeans, the illegals are not planning to stay a long time. And that was the end of the question. And no one in the room was the mom to be like, wait, 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 hold up. You think the Europeans are staying a long time and the illegals are temporary? Like they're not here for travel. Like the Europeans. Jen, Jen, what you just said is a complete 180 degree lie. They just like, oh, well, Jen Psaki said this and they write it down and they and they tweet it and that's it. And they, we need an adult to finally say, time out, time out, Jen. That was just a lie. We want to we want to take that over again. We just accept Lies. I mean, we would need a Michael Malice press secretary. Yes. Yeah. With a, you know, yes, we would. Mises Caucus, Libertarian, Dave I, Smith. Yeah. I don't even care if this whole country becomes communist in 20 years. If I can see Michael Malice's <laughs> press secretary <laughs> for one day, yeah. yes. I will die happy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yes. that's all I want to see. There's one guy in the diplomatic press corps when I used to work at the State Department and the Bush administration long, long time ago, and he's still there, Matt Lee, and he is by far the senior most foreign policy uh, journalist and he used to make our lives miserable because I worked in the press office um, and he he was ruthless and he's the only one. But again, it doesn't get as much attention because it's the foreign policy beat. But but he will just take them to task and say, no, no, no. Hang on. You just said this. You said this yesterday. That doesn't make any sense. Like if you ever watch his exchange, he does not 
by BS. It's but, really the but, difference but, between an investigative journalist and a reporter. Yeah. Like a reporter's going to say, you lie to him and I'm just going to report on the Or that. the White House right. press pool where they're all just like, oh, Jen Psaki said this and they so type it down. We need more investigated journalists in Absolutely. there. But they don't really get invited, right? It's like an invite only thing. No, it's mm. it's, it's it's press. It's the White House reporters. Mm -hmm. they're, the, they're just there to ask questions and report what's said. They're not investigating. But we definitely need, you know, you know we, we need someone to challenge it, but I'll, I'll say this, nobody cares. You know why? Because when we look at stories about, you know, like the CNN, Republicans are trying to make it an issue that Biden's mm. not mentally. Republicans pounce. And I'm like, it's, I'm not, it's not Republicans. Yeah. It's independent voters overwhelmingly disapprove of Joe Biden. Yeah. But everything, you know, I, I love it. When, when I did the Russell Brand podcast and was talking about civil war and I just went to town as fast as I could on all the different points about like street fighting, January uh, 6th, all that stuff and psychological warfare, fifth generational warfare. And the comments were like, Tim Pool is a leftist. You know, he says this about Trump. Tim Pool is a right winger. He says this about Biden. <laughs> and I'm just like, these people don't seem to realize that independent voters exist. Yeah. So they come out and they're like, it's just Republicans. And I'm like, you know, it was funny. There was this research that, the researcher who did this thing on YouTube uh, years ago where he was tracking the political uh, persuasions of YouTube recommendations. Mm. And he was doing it because of this idea of the rabbit hole that they kept pushing. And so he had, uh, I think he basically had f four categories, left, center, right, and exclusively critical of left. And he initially put people like me and Dave Rubin in the category of exclusively critical of left. And so I talked to him and I pointed out like, why is that the case when I do express my opinions that are, I think the real issue was we are, ta we are complaining about Democrats but our opinions were not right wing. That was the mm. only issue. So if I said something like, hey, a Green New Deal that actually rebuilds infrastructure is a good thing, but the Democrats are pushing some weird socialist garbage about universal college, that's not a Green New Deal. He's like, you're just criticizing the left. I'm like, I'm literally supporting a leftist policy. But either the left was in favor of critical race theory, centrists were like mixed on it, and the right opposed it. Yeah. So if you opposed critical race theory, you were just called a, a critical of left. I'm like, that, 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 that's how people even researchers view what's happening right now. And yeah. I'm like, isn't it perhaps you're a centrist then? Or heterodox or something? Or mm -hmm. politically homeless? No. Politics only flows in one direction. If a right-wing dude stands next to a left-wing dude, the left-wing dude is called right-wing. If a right-wing dude is hanging out with Antifa and they're all waving Antifa flags and he's got his arms around their, you know, their shoulders with his thumbs up, they will say they're actually secret right-wingers. Yeah. 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 When, I, when I get into conversations with this with people, one of my favorite things to say is, okay, so you hear about the right wing a lot. The, the right wing is obviously a problem in, in your view, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. The news mm -hmm. is always reporting it. There's a there, you know, far right wing extremist. I was just like, so is there a, is there a far left? Oh, well, no, there's not a far left. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They don't, they don't, they just can't see it. They refuse yeah. to see it. It's willful blindness. Yeah. And legislatively, they know that because that's why they have to, like you mentioned, the Green New Deal with all this leftist garbage in it. And I also oppose the Green New Deal. Um, but they have to sneak that leftist garbage in it because if it stood on its own, they know they wouldn't have a vote for it. Look, you mentioned at the beginning of the show, you mentioned the immigration bill. Why are they trying to tag it into a spending bill? Because they know they can't pass an immigration bill. The, the immigration bill they want, so they have to squeeze it into. And that's just what our Congress does now. We don't write. If we could have a vote on this water bottle where everyone yay or nay water bottle, Congress would work, but instead it's like, well, we can't do that because we don't want to. I don't want to go on record about the water bottle, right? So we take everything and throw it on a four thousand, and that's where we are. Four thousand page, three point five trillion dollars. Yeah. We will vote on it on Christmas Eve at nine o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and that's what we do because the, all of these things, if they stood on their own, I don't want to get judged on that. So we throw them all in this crap sandwich, and we call it like the "For the Children of Tomorrow" holding hands across America <laughs> bill. Yeah. And then like, and if you don't vote for this, Chris, you hate the troops, and they're like, and you hate America, and it's like, I just want to vote on the water bottle. Nope. Not well, but, but, but hold on. So why doesn't Rand Paul or Thomas Massey just slide stuff in. I'll tell you this. When they did the omnibus spending bill, remember that? 5,000 something pages, yeah. $12 million for Pakistani gender studies programs. I don't know about any of you listening, mm. but I don't care if you're on the left or the right. We can all agree that spending $12 million on gender study programs in America is better than giving it to Pakistan. Yeah. At least you'd create American jobs. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if I agree with that necessarily. We don't want weird But you know, I get your point. Yeah. But why are we giving our money away for ridiculous things like this? More importantly, when I see that, I'm like, Rand Paul, yeah. if you're listening, can you just write something very simple saying, and we abolish the Federal Reserve yes. and just yeah. slide it in slide there? Because nobody read it. 
Yeah. <laughs> he knows like, nobody read Everybody it. votes on it, Everyone. and they're like, yay. And then all of a sudden they're like, did we just abolish the Federal Reserve? <laughs> what do we do? So why doesn't he do that? I don't know. He do- Be- Because they, they, I think, because they see the process as an honorable righteous constitutionally mandated mm. and this is how we do it so we don't violate the rules thanks for checking out this clip from the tim cast irl podcast if you want to see the full show come back to this channel youtube.com slash tim irl monday through friday at 8 p.m where you can leave comments and super chat and we actually will read your comments on the show don't forget to like share subscribe and if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else Go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.